I worked out overnight that the first year I played FIFA, the globally recognized football or soccer game was yes. in 2002. Thierry Henry was on the cover of that title. Amazing. The big development for you is you've renamed to EAFC and you've changed the deal with FIFA. That's well documented. Yes. It's been about a week of full distribution. Can you give us a sense of how that's gone? That was a big change for a lot of fans. Oh, it's a big change for all of us in the industry. We're so optimistic about what this change means for our future. And we certainly will talk more about FC and our earnings call, but I will tell you early reads from our players, which matter the most, um, that the, their, the, the sentiment is very high, engagement's high, and they're incredibly excited about the quality of the game. And this is just an incredible moment for us to launch our own brand, EA Sports Football Club, um, FC, around the world. And so we look, are looking forward to another 30 years of incredible game experiences we get to bring to players. I just want to jump in that. You know, your job is the licensing, the studios. Will you ever, is it possible to ever go back to FIFA? And, you know, the, the point was that they asked for too much money, right? Well, we saw it as a great opportunity for us to actually have more flexibility, more creativity. We have over 300 clubs in the game, so right. it allows us more deeper partnerships with them. It allows us to have partnerships with, play, with people like Nike, which is great for our players. And we can also have more creative yeah. creator tools for players in the game. So it's really a significant opportunity for us to evolve and change the experience. And we will, FIFA was a great partner for us and we had a great partnership together. So we will we will look to potentially do World Cup partnerships in the future as possible. So we're, it's, it's, it's just a, a, a bigger future, more expansive is how we're thinking about it. Let's talk about creator tools and the yes. studios with which and way they develop these games, right? now. The oxygen has sucked out the room all around AI this year. Is that something you've been leaning into, thinking about the way in which this is going to really supercharge the way in which you can provide content right now? Okay, AI is such a, an exciting topic, isn't it, for so many companies and particularly for gaming. And I would say, um, and I just I also went back to the archives and was thinking about AI for, for electronic arts. We're such a native AI entertainment company. Back in 1988, 22 of the players in Madden were AI right. players. And so we've always have been connected to it. But this is certainly a new era and certainly a new phase for AI and we are thinking about it in three ways. It's definitely going to optimize what we have for tools and workflows and help our developers and players create more better experiences. It's also going to be an, a significant expansion, expander of content and frequency and how we show up. Right. And it can also be an incredibly transformative with business models, our scale. We have 700 million players in our network. Mm -hmm. And so the idea around moderating content for them and keeping co community safe is going to be, A, is going to play a meaningful role for us um, in that transformation on our scale. Laura, what's interesting is going back in your archives, you've been at the business for 27 years. Something and like that. I was very young. <laughs> very young, but you've scaled. And what's interesting is when you look at your titles, you've been, rem well, highlighted as one of the most powerful women in sports. You're on the board of governors for the British Film Institute. Like, this shows the power of gaming because it isn't just about gaming. It's IP at its very nature. Content. Yeah, let's, let's Content. talk about the scale of the industry. Does it go unnoticed sometimes, do you think? Oh, gosh, perhaps. I mean, it's, it's gamers, there's 3.5 million billion gamers in the world, so they, they certainly are noticing what we're creating. Um, and it's close to a $350 billion industry, so it's significant. Um, and certainly outsizes some of the media, you know, other movie and TV content for sure. And the, but the thing I'm most excited about is what gaming brings to culture and what gaming brings to society. So gaming is certainly about play. People are creating, they have creative self-expression in our games. They're watching other people play games. And most importantly, they're socially connecting around all of this. And so it is a sizable industry. A lot of people play games. We are incredibly inspired by that. And we have such a runway and so much growth ahead of us. You think about Gen Z, Gen Alpha, they have grown up. Like, this is their number one entertainment medium, their number one preferred choice. And so the idea that, that, is, that, that this is ahead of us and that they are just entering into market and then generations behind them, I'm just optimistic about the growth ahead still. The seismic shift in your industry is Microsoft's acquisition of Activision, if it goes through, as expected, in the next couple of weeks. Where does that leave EA? You're basically the biggest independent studio left. So do you become a target, frankly? <laughs> Hard question, but how do you stay competitive? But well, what, what an amazing deal, right? I mean, I, I, I believe- You're positive is, about it. Very, I am positive about the deal. This is, this, this will look to be the largest technology acquisition in US history, I believe. You will know more than I do about that. And it's, in, and it's about a gaming company. And so I just think it punctuates the significance of gaming 
and the role that we play in media and entertainment and technology. So um, I'm, I'm very optimistic about what this all means as an expander of how we're seeing and how we can partner and the significance of gaming um, and, and culture in general. And for electronic arts, we you know we know that making games is hard. Actually, it's very it's very complicated, high form of, of media. It takes yeah. a long time. And a lot, yes, and a lot a lot of money, a lot of time. A lot of companies have tried. And so yes, of course, I would imagine that companies are interested in electronic arts because what we do is very hard, and, and we are very good at making good games. And so, but I, I would say that we're we're just mostly focused on our strategy, mostly focused on the future and executing really well for the growth plans that we have ahead.